The iMore Show is brought to you today by Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Squarespace features an elegant interface, beautiful templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. Start building your website today at squarespace.com. Enter offer code iMore at checkout to get 10% off. Squarespace, build it beautiful. It is December 22nd, 2015. We're pre-recording this because who wants to podcast on Christmas? I mean, seriously. This is the I'm More Show. <laughs> Joining me as always, we have the managing editor of I'm More, and I'm pretty sure one of the main characters in The Force Awakens, <laughs> Randy Caldwell. How are you, Ren? Hello, I'm, I'm doing well. So do I get to be Ray or do I get to be the evil Sith Lord? Because uh, my, my name is close enough for either of them. So one of the one of our friends, uh, our mutual internet friends, suggested that Rene and Serenity indicated that we might be members of the Knights of Ren. We're the Knights of Ren, yeah. man, I knew that creepy mask that arrived on my da- my doorstep like last week was a an ominous sign, but I didn't quite know what. And I don't know. Am I supposed to take the light halberd or the light mace? I mean, I, I just... oh, that's a tough decision. I mean, one has like plus two to agility, but one just looks cool. So mm. yeah, but at least those cloaks are warm. I mean, that's the. <laughs> Definitely, definitely Seth are prepared for winter. So we, we have been trying to do, we originally were going to do the year in review in one show and we done, we didn't even get through a third of the year. Then we got through the second third of the year and we still haven't hit September yet, Ren. It was just, the more we look at this year, the, the crazier it was. It's been so jam-packed, Renee. It's been so jam-packed. Uh, we, I'm, I'm looking at more iOS devices and, and Macs on my on my desk right now than, than I think I've ever had in a single year. It's a little insane. Like, I just hear Phil yeah. Schiller going, can't stop, won't stop. Meh. I'm pointing to my iMac because I can't lift it up in front of the camera. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> Too many uh, things. So many things. So uh, heading into September, there was an <laughs> annual event. Um, Apple used to have their iPod event every September, their music yes. event. And that gradually became an iPhone event. But this year it was pretty much an everything event. It was just all the things. Yep. They basically threw in... A giant smorgasbord of pot. Yeah, so I mean, rumor going into it was that Apple was going to only have one event this September for a variety of reasons. I mean, it, it's logistically difficult to have an event and to have a smaller event just for Macs and just for iPads might not make sense if they didn't have a lot of Mac news, which it turned out they didn't. So they had, and it, remind me if I'm forgetting anything here, they had iPhone 6S, iPhone 6S Plus, Apple TV, Apple Watch Hermes, um, a tiny little shout out to OS 10 El Capitan. Tiny. Uh, yeah, and then <laughs> I, iPad Mini 4 and iPad Pro with Apple Mit Apple Pencil and Smart Keyboard. It was so many things. So many was things. Was that really all one event? Yes, it was insane. Oh my gosh. You know, like 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 a typical Steve Jobs insanely great sense, but it was still so yeah. much stuff. That's right, because they announced the iPad Pro. Oh, wow, my gosh. Yeah, four segments. It started off with Jeff Williams, who just got promoted to chief operating officer coming out. He's in charge of the Apple Watch. You kind of want to have someone in charge of something when it's a nascent product category. Oh, yeah. And he uh, once again went over a little bit of Watch OS 2 and then introduced Hermes, which was really interesting. And I'm wearing one now. And I don't know if you have yours on, but you have you have a Hermes band. Yes, I do not have mine on right now, but I do have an Hermes uh, double tour. And it's, it was interesting because this, what Apple had always positioned the Apple Watch as more of a fashionable product than their traditional just consumer electronics thing. But this was a partnership with a famous French fashion house. Yep. I mean, it was a big step forward for Apple in terms of getting the watch in the hands of fashionistas as well as the general tech uh, consumer landscape. I think they tried very hard with the original Apple Watch sort of to launch the the gold version as the like, oh, are you a high-end fashion icon? Do you like fancy things? Well, how Dior. do you like rose gold? Uh, and I, I don't actually know how well the, the rose gold and the gold, the actual gold watches sold. I, I, I know some people. China have, and the Emirates apparently really well. Yeah, I can believe that. But uh, this is, this adds a, a nicer tier for people who like fashion but don't necessarily have uh, seventeen thousand dollars lying around. Uh, so if you you know you want you want a nice watch and you can pay fifteen hundred to two hundred two thousand dollars. That's a little bit well, little you and bit I l- more in the price range. <laughs> you and I looked at the Hermes site and the Hermes watch, even without the Apple Watch, like just with a re- I don't want to say regular, but with a mechanical watch on it, was I think two or three times the price of the Apple Watch Hermes. Oh yeah, something like that. It's ridiculous. Like three thousand really, for the double you know tour. What? 
I've never, I know people who swear by Hermes stuff. And um, while I think it's very well crafted, I've never really been a huge fan of it. The double tour has won me over the more I wear it, the more I'm like, yeah, this is actually really cool. And even the faux, the the Fermes, uh <laughs> Amazon bands, uh, they don't quite have the same craftsmanship as the Hermes, but the styling is very cool but it was odd because you just yeah. like they you can't buy them online you had to buy them at very very few apple mm -hmm. retail stores and even fewer hermes outlets uh we managed to find the double tour in miami on on launch weekend but it took me i think two months to find a cuff in stock in new york city i know um, you, you would check every single time i would check the, i checked in san francisco i checked in new york and i checked in eaton center in toronto and it just they didn't have it and it's odd that whether Hermes didn't want to make a lot of them or they weren't sure or it was just sort of a, a, an aspirational product, I'm not certain. I mean, I think there's something to be said about selective supply here where they just – I don't necessarily think they wanted to constrain it to the point of frustration, but it's a it's a unique product. And uh, I think it was – kind of went the other way around with the gold watches. I feel like there was a lot of places to buy the gold, the rose gold and the solid gold Apple watch. And it didn't have the same kind of sparkly allure as I heard lots of people on launch day being like, I want to try a double tour and I can't boo. <laughs> and I'm not sure if that necessarily, like if that builds up anticipation, I think that's what they were going for is like, maybe people will be really excited about this. Uh, yeah, super interesting. And it, and it gave the it, it, we had the Watch OS two come out at the same time. We'd seen that at WWDC. It wasn't a huge surprise, but it did it did sort of there were new colored bands, new sports bands, things too, and it sort of brought that seasonality into the Apple Watch, which we haven't like Apple doesn't traditionally release new iPhone colors uh, before no. the holidays, <laughs> so it was more like more seasonal sort of a product. And I wonder if it's going to continue if every year we'll see like a couple refreshes. I hope so. I think that's kind of I like the idea of having more case colors. I love the the light gold Apple Watch, uh, the sport. I think it looks really cool. I think it looks especially cool with the black band. There's yeah. something about black and gold that just, ugh. The rose gold is nice too, and it matches. Yeah. It, and it, like you can have that sort of elegant look without having to spend the $10,000 plus for the actual gold. Yeah, which I think is really nice. And there's just, I don't know, there's just something very classy about it. Um, the new band colors too, you know, the sport bands, I have an obscene amount of sport bands and it's just, the collection keeps growing because they're cheap enough that I'm like, Oh, $50, you know, I'm, but orange. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, which is not to say I'm miss money bags cause I'm certainly not, <laughs> but like, that's, that's something where I can be like, yeah, once every six to eight months, I could consider buying a band because that would be cool. That might be neat. That might be fun to try and then go from there. <laughs> Yeah, it got to the point. I think we were talking about this previously. That I'm, I'm. I, I, it doesn't really bother me that Apple's going to release an Apple Watch too, because that's how technology works. I just want it to be compatible with all these bands, because that's where my oh, actual yeah. investment lies. No question. I think that's a that's a really reasonable thing. I'm and I'm really hoping that if they do make the case slimmer. They will keep the same linking mechanism for at least a couple of years. Please, guys. We had ten years of the thirty pin dock adapter. Let's see if we, let's hope to beat that run. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, next was the Apple TV. And the Apple TV is a, was one of the strangest products of the year for me because uh, oh, Apple hadn't released one since the spring of 2012, which is two and a half years previously. Been a while. They'd been trying different things. They tried a set-top box. They tried an over-the-top service. They tried to record it. There was all sorts of different projects, but none of them really got off the ground. And then finally, they went to what I always wanted them to do from the beginning. This is all I ever wanted was a better Apple TV that runs apps. Mm -hmm. And they finally did that, but they did it so late and had to get it out that it sort of shipped maybe 80% done. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because I was actually talking about the Apple TV uh, specifically as it relates to games with uh, Alan Pike on Up, Up, Down, which is a, an episode that should come out pretty soon. The party monster uh, himself. Yes, the, the, the great party monster. Uh, the Apple TV is such a frustrating product because it does so many things. Uh, yeah, if it was so, terrible, we wouldn't yeah. care. <laughs> well, exactly. If it was just a crappy product from Apple, I could just be like, all right. Well, it's a cube. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Pretty, but whatever. But it does, like, Siri is incredibly promising. Um, the fact that I can run Plex on my Apple TV is really cool. Uh, the fact that Siri, like, ugh, there's, there's so many neat things about the Apple TV, but it's just not there yet. It feels like the first generation Apple TV to me, honestly. It's very much an iterative, or the first generation iPhone. It's an iterative product. It's not there it's not going to be there probably until the next software update. And that's a little bit of a bummer for uh, what? It starts at 149? Yeah, um, 149 for the 32 gigabyte. For the 32 gig, yeah. That's a bit of a bummer for that much money. But at the same time, 
I do think it's an investment growth where it's you are you are buying an Apple TV now so that you get to put in, you know, what you want to see from it. And what's what's really important to you. Apple Music with Siri was really important to a lot of people and uh, the team heard it loud and clear and now Apple Music and Siri is integrated into the Apple TV box. Yeah, they said next year and it came out faster. Yeah. Um, so it's just a matter of, you know, but, see, but that should have been this. So this is the thing with it is that I understand, like, I understand all these constraints and I understand that a it, Apple is a company that sprints at the finish line and gets those products done at the last minute. But the, the cost of that is sometimes you, you don't make it. Sometimes you have to either short, like bring the finish line up so you'll get there in time or like you kind of go over the finish line. And in this case, it felt like, you know, they, this is what we can ship. And there was fundamental things like Siri for music. And I understand it's hard, but two and a half years, it, but yeah. The team is fantastic. The engineers, the designers, all feel fantastic. But it feels like this is where the middle management pain exists. And I don't know if it's in iTunes or in product or in accessories or where it is. But there was just the, the decision to make this box did not happen early enough. And because of that, because of the vacillation and the different ideas and the competing interests and do we need a service and do we not need a service, uh, it, it just it resulted in this being late and then not having enough time. Yeah, it was very sad. Oh, sad BB-8. Yeah, BB-8, BB-8, sad. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the Apple TV has a lot of promise, but it just, as you're right, it just didn't have enough time um, to be proper, which seems crazy because 2012. But because of the new iterations and what they finally, I think they have finally cracked what where they want to go. The problem is they just don't have everything developed yet. Uh, the fact that you can't build... Apple TV games that only require an external controller is infuriating to me uh, because yeah. the Siri remote is, you know, not bad, uh, but it has some serious deficiencies if you want any kind of intense game experience on the Apple TV. So being able to do that is going to be really important for developing the Apple TV as a game platform. There are some fun games that exist on there right now, but they're just just not there. Yeah, so this is where the, um, and I'm guessing that this is as big a discussion inside Apple as it is outside Apple because these are all user interface issues. Like if you sell games that require a controller, how do you make that clear to people? If people buy it and they feel like, oh, now I have to go buy a controller, you're ripping me off. How do you make it clear to them? Do you, should you detect a controller before you show them the app? Should you give them multiple warnings? And that's the problem, right? I assume they just did not have enough time to build that in because originally they announced that you would be able to do games with just a controller and no Siri remote required. And then they backtracked on that. I have to assume that's because of a compatibility issue and a and a proper warnings, being able to build in proper warnings. Yeah, and likewise, the uh, being able to buy Apple TV apps, if you find an awesome Apple TV app, you have no way of sending that to me. I can't recommend it to anybody. I just have to be like, Google or search for this. I can't even say Google because no, because there's no it. web kit on the Apple TV. Yeah. You can't send a link. You can't it's, click it's on a just, link. It's depressing. All I want to do is talk about this. Like we are writers. We love promoting new apps that are really cool and fun and exciting. And unfortunately, no. So I'm going to write this up, I think, for tomorrow. But my big wish for the new year, now that we have Phil Schiller as the Uber Lord of App Store, new is app that we... Store, new App yeah, Store. Well, just the ability to buy anywhere. Like, mm -hmm. let me buy... On, you have iTunes preview pages. Put a buy button there. Let me buy cross-platform. If Serenity has a great Mac app and I click on it on my iPhone, don't say, oh, you can't view this here, blah, 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 blah. Just say, do you want to buy this? And let me click on it and let me go to the web and tap on it. And then when I get to the device, have a pop-up saying, you initiated a purchase of this. Do you want to complete that purchase? That way it's safe. I'm not unintentionally buying stuff, but I'm also not forgetting about stuff. And it's sort of where I need it to be. Yeah. No, absolutely. Let me, let me give me, let me give you my money. <laughs> All we want to do is buy apps. Let us buy apps. But yeah, I do love this Siri. I do love that we have these apps. I don't love that the apps aren't all finished. Like the Netflix app is, is, is a step backwards. The TV show app is a step backwards. But there are some good apps, you know, um, my my top apps list for now, uh, I Hulu is great, but Hulu's great for you know across the board. Plex is great when you can get it to work. Uh, my my home network and Plex don't always agree. I on the gaming front, Alto's Adventure is an iPhone game that works beautifully on the Apple TV. Crossy Road multiplayer is so much fun. You know what I've been playing lately that I really enjoy is a game called Just Dance. Just Dance now. <laughs> Just dance. Yeah, so it's it's essentially, I, they have it for the Xbox and for P, the PS4, and I think it works really well with the Kinect because it actually senses what you're doing. I spent so much time doing the Superman run. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this, so this silly little app just has you hold either an iPhone or the Siri remote in your right hand, and you can, do up, you can dance up to four people, and then it 
tracks using the accelerometer and the gyroscope to how you're dancing and how you're moving. And then it rates you, you know, uh, Dance Dance Revolution style. But instead of having to hit like specific pads and then have those extra mats, you just get to dance. Yeah. And there's lots of silly songs. I don't know. I am I am really enjoying that. I feel like that's a really good Apple TV party game. Um, sketch, uh, sketch TV. Yep. Uh, what sketch party TV. Sketch party TV. I was like, why am I not remembering the title of this properly? Sketch party TV is awesome if you like Pictionary. Um, they have Space Team for the Apple TV now. Yes, but I, I, I don't think it quite works how I want it to. Shaking the TV is hard. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, how do you wormhole flip, and how do you like swipe from button to button? Uh, and finally, Song Pop Party is mm -hmm. really fun. Good trivia game. So those are my those are my like top Apple TV app picks. Yeah, it's it's it has a ton of potential, and I think now that they have that focus, now that they've shipped, and I think now that they've restructured a little bit, uh, I have the feeling that they're going to ship yeah. more often. I hope so. I think. Well, again, they got version one oh at the door, and I think this does this paves the way for where they want to go. And once you're a platform, you can't you can't not ship because developers and everybody are counting on you. It, it makes it very public. True facts. All right, so then we got, it's wait, there's more, a lot more. iPhone 6S and iPhone 6S Plus. And people had tended over the years to look at the S years as iterative, but that's never that's really been the case. Out. Yeah, there's been Siri and there's been uh, uh, Touch ID, all these great advances. And this year we got 4K, 12 megapixels. We got touch, uh, sorry, 3D touch. There's a lot to love in these new iPhones. A9 uh, processor. Oh my God! A9 processor, new camera, live photos, Touch ID too. Touch ID, faster Touch ID. Oh my! Uh, I I did a what What's new in the iPhone 6s and 6s Plus in 30 seconds with uh, with my fiance when it first came out? And seriously, we had to speak super fast because there was too many things. So many things. No, and they're absolutely uh, uh, rose gold. Rose gold. Ooh, shiny. Uh, and rumor has it the Touch ID uh, on the iPhone 6S is actually slowed down because the original version you'd come close to pressing it and already unlock. <laughs> uh, I I never I'm not in the camp where I'm like it's too fast. I will always take a faster Touch ID. It can never be too fast. Like it does. Like you do have to get used to not opening your lock screen with the home button if you ever want to use your lock screen. Oh yeah. But but that's that's a, I'll gladly pay that any day. I mean, that, that just teaches people to use the on-off button for, you know, actual on-off button purposes. You know, the only problem with the iPhone 6S's beautiful Touch ID sensor is because everything else is so slow to wake up. I'm gesticulating uh, for people listening to my Apple Watch right now. Everything else is so slow that I end up pressing a button like three times on other devices trying to get it to wake up or go somewhere. Yeah, no, it is it is scary, great technology. And I like that, again, like Apple iterates and they do things like the 7000 mm -hmm. series aluminum on this. So they, they just, there's, they're always putting more and new and cool stuff in. And if you so saw the- tiny. If you saw the 60 Minutes interview that was this weekend, they went into Johnny Ive's design lab and then they went into the camera and they had, uh, I forget his first name, Townsend, showing off uh, the camera stack yeah. with the optical image stabilization. And that stuff is just endlessly fascinating to me. No, I'm just- Showing rose gold. So yeah. rose gold. So pink. It's so pink. It's so pink and so pre beautiful. Uh, yeah, and ridiculously fast. It's so tiny. It feels so... This feels like a mini phone compared is to... Is that like the 6S Plus? This is the 6. Yeah, 6S This is the plus. 6, and this is the 6S. That's no and moon. Yeah, I definitely... I love the way that the 6 feels in my hand, but I've gotten so spoiled by the 6S Plus's screen. So spoiled. They showed that in the design lab too. They went, uh, Johnny, I've showed the 10 different prototype sizes that they made and, and sort of spoke about choosing 4.7 and 5.5, not because they felt uh, the best in the hand, but because they felt like the best overall experience, like the most, he kept talking about emotional connections to textures and, and weights. And, and That's Johnny for you, <laughs> but it's true. You know what? It's absolutely true. Uh, you do like, there is a certain, a certain feel that these phones have that others just don't. Um, we might as well, since we're talking about iPhone, talk about an accessory that came out later, but came out for them, uh, by which I'm, I'm holding up a hump. Hashtag case. love the hump. Yeah. Hash, hashtag the hump is strange. <laughs> um, but All right. So this battery case, and I have, um, I have 10 other iPhone 6 and 6S battery cases at my feet. So I've been trying, you know, and testing the feel of all of these things. This battery case is actually really well designed. I yeah. kind of hate it. But I, but I have to admit the fact that like of all of them, the fact that I can just slide it in here and then just pop it up like that and it's easy to take on, it's easy to take off. 
the fact that it actually has dual charging so I can see what the chase the case is charged what the iPhone is charged that it has a lightning port that's really easy to just stick on my on my charger here so it doesn't uh, you know it doesn't overlap the headphone port is a bit of a pain but overall like this this is a really good battery case but it's really tiny in terms of like in terms of how much money it is versus how much capacity you get I am very reluctant to be like, buy the battery case instead of buying an anchor charger that you can charge anything with. Yeah, I will always recommend, like I have the Power Station Duo and I'll always recommend those because I want to charge my iPad. I charge my MacBook on that with the USB-C cable. Yeah, well, it's so, like there's, there's stuff like the Tilt, which is like a battery case that has both a lightning cord in it and a USB-C. I don't know. I find I find these, uh, these sort of flat wallet-sized battery cases a lot more useful than onboard cases nowadays. Yeah, I absolutely prefer them. Seen, have you seen a battery case for the 6S Plus? I, I have. Like, I have one right here. Oh, <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's huge. Oh, my goodness. It, wow, yeah, is that it, a Mophie? It, yeah, that's the Mophie. Um, yeah. It's, it, well, you know what? But that's the thing is like um, Apple is not competing on capacity. They're competing on technology. They have a completely yeah. unfair advantage in that they can actually tell the iPhone that they're in a battery case and not being charged. And then they can do complete power management and other cases can't do that. Yeah. Once they're plugged in, they just think they're plugged in. Oh, background processes, go updates, go fire everything. Uh, and then the battery drains. And because they're so they're they're so radio opaque and they're not supposed to I mean, they, they try their best, but it is radio interference. The radio has to amp up and you end up spending more power. Uh, and it's 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 not a it's not a perfect trade-off, and Apple tries for the greatest efficiency they can get. Mm -hmm. So I really like it. If I just want something, uh, I, I used it for most of last week, and I'll use it a little bit again over the holidays because I want to you know figure out what the trade-offs are too. And if I just want something small to, to just fit in my pocket that takes up almost no space, because my my power station duo is huge and it is heavy. Yeah. And if I don't have a bag with me, I don't want it in the pocket. I really don't. No, the, for me. The trade-off is if I am using the 6S Plus just for its battery life, this case essentially turns the 6S into the 6S Plus. Yeah. Uh, without honestly, without too much problem on on feel. The hump is weird. I'm not going to say that the hump isn't weird looking, uh, but it actually does feel slightly better in the hand. There's something really nice. Yeah, about and you can place that. your finger like you can kind of cup yeah. the bottom of it and put your finger on top of it. There's it something really... really nice about having that group. It, the only thing that would actually make it better is if they made little tiny battery humps so that I could actually fit my fingers in between each of them. So it was like a, a physical grip. Stormtrooper case. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if, I mean, if you're going to go all out, go all out. Yeah, so I, 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 I think the criticism about it is absolutely valid, provided. But I think a lot of the people, even in the tech industry, were just completely uh, they just did not do their jobs with this case because they're like oh apple design this this case is incredibly well designed you may not like it like subjectively versus objectively you oh, may yeah. not like it but objectively it is a very well engineered and designed case it's weird looking i wish it was in more colors because i really yeah. don't white white is white and black just picks up dust like nobody's business especially with the, the white one does too yeah, yeah. but like I, I could go for rose gold or rose gray or gosh i have you know 15 of these silicone cases down there that I've been testing and any, any color other than white or space gray, Apple, any other color, really do it. So, yeah. So, and they also introduced um, the watch charger, which had a similar finish, uh, Apple watch charging disc late in the year. And as far as I understand it, these, it just took them longer to get these products to a point they were happy with. It's not that they meant to introduce them late in the year. If they could have, they would have shipped them with the product. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times they're like, Oh, we want to change this. We want to change that. And they really do care deeply about this stuff. Yeah. I don't blame them. Although I really don't like, I mean, I haven't seen the watch charger in person from the pictures. It looks like a medical equipment. Like it looks like it should be, a, it should stick to your chest and like have <laughs> squishy. Oh, it's a Tron disc. Yeah. Yeah. Take it off your back, charge your up. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's for people who sort of want the Apple aesthetic, which is incredible simplicity and an elegant design with nice materials. That, that's yeah. really all it is. Uh, if you want to like to diff like a uh, 12 South, it's a very nice stand. If you want something that's nice and elevated. Mm -hmm. So iPad uh, 6S, 6S Plus, this is the end of, of this cycle, but I think they did a, a really good job. It is absolutely the best iPhone I've ever used. And I use the yeah. iPhone more than anything else in this world, I think. Oh, I, I absolutely agree. I, I mean, the iPhone is a daily driver for me. I do just as much work on my iPhone as I do on my iPad. And sometimes I think maybe I just shouldn't have my iPhone by my bed when I wake up in the morning because it's so easy now for me to be like, well, I can start triaging email while I'm still I know. here. I don't have to get up. It's, be, it's become dangerously 
hyper competent. Uh, yeah, we have to have a show on that. We'll get George on if she can tell us to stop doing that. Yeah, seriously. Stop <laughs> stop ruining your life. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and I am going to tell you about Squarespace. Uh, Squarespace, I mean, everybody knows Squarespace. It's just the easiest way possible to make a website. And I speak to someone who used to write websites in Notepad on a PC and draw them in Factual Design Painter on a Mac. And that's just how you did it when everything was HTML, angle bracket, blink, ankle bracket, marquee, close brackets. I mean, it, that that's the way it was. But over time, more and more systems came out and you could get editors and integrated development environments, but you still had to find a host. And then there was providers, but that ended up being GeoCities and nobody wanted that. And now if, if you have an idea for a website, you don't have to let any technical... Uh, any technical issues block your path, you can just go to Squarespace and you can get set up and you can get a website running. Uh, I, I wanna say in minutes, cause it feels like the last time I did it a couple months ago, it was literally in minutes. Because building a website, it can be tough. And even if you do know your way around coding, creating something that looks good and works well, it's it's time consuming, especially if you really care about it. And I know you do. So whether it's for a business site, a portfolio, a restaurant, for anything, you probably need you need an easier way of doing it. And that's where Squarespace comes in. It lets you easily build websites that are beautiful looking into doing it without breaking a sweat. They provide simple, powerful, and beautiful websites with professionally designed templates that look great regardless of your skill level, whether you want to code or not. It provides you with an intuitive and easy tools to create your web space. So your website, it's state of the art. It's secure, it's stable, it's got e-commerce built in. Uh, it's it's just if anyone I know wants to build a web and believe me when you know how to build a website everybody asks you to make a website for them and they all think it's just easy uh, and then you you have to support that website for them and change it for them and you do not want to do that just it, it'll just end friendships <laughs> believe me Squarespace will save your friendships uh, so you can't beat the ease and the simplicity it gives you 24 24 7 online support for your beautiful website you don't need to, sorry, There's you can start a trial. There's no credit card required. You can start building your website today. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use offer code IMORE. You'll get 10% off your first pro, uh, purchase and you'll show support for the IMORE show. Uh, and we'll be able to see the wonderful, awesome, incredible websites that you build. I want to thank Squarespace so much for supporting the IMORE show and for generally making the internet a nicer place for everybody. Go to Squarespace, build it beautiful. Thanks, Squarespace. We still haven't gotten to the iPad Pro, right? <laughs> No, we haven't. My favorite thing of the year. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so um, they showed the iPad Mini 4, which I think is an awesome little iPad. Uh, gorgeous. It finally has the same laminated display. It's got the Touch ID. It's got the A8 processor, not the X, but the A8 processor because it's small. Terrific iPad. But then they came out and they dropped the iPad Pro on us. And you could dropping the mic. <laughs> yeah, boom. And I think the whole stage just just rattled. And there was a picture of like the whole universe on that 12.9 inch screen. I love one of the one of the best ads they've done this year is the iPad Pro sound and color. Do do sound and color. Uh showing the universe. It's just it's awesome. Uh this is my favorite. My I almost said my favorite toy. My favorite Apple tech of the year. My precious. Yes, my precious. I don't, that wasn't even golem. Uh, the iPad Pro is a toy in some respects uh, because it's a giant iPad and I've, you know, the iPads are great. But when you pair it with devices like the Logitech Create and the Apple Pencil, which we'll talk about in a second, it goes from, ooh, shiny, giant touch screen to, wait, this can actually replace my MacBook Air and do it well and actually I exceed where my MacBook Air fails or succeed where my MacBook Air fails or exceed my MacBook Air's capabilities in certain areas. And that's crazy for a touch screen. For somebody who is who swore off iPad-only work a couple years ago being like, nope, it's too complicated. It's too, uh-uh, no, no. Uh, now, I, you know, I have not, with the exception of getting some imagery off of the Apple TV, because the Apple TV needs Xcode to download screenshots and video. Uh, with that exception, I have not used my MacBook Air since the iPad Pro arrived. But Serenity, iPads are consumption only. <laughs> not this one. Uh, the iPad Pro for me is amazing because A, iOS 9 software updates, which we talked about in the previous, uh, the previous show, iOS 9 split view um, and slide over just rock my world on this device. The apps have gotten better. Um, 
there are new iPad Pro only apps rolling out every day. It's a slow going because there is the the question of, you know, can you really make money selling professional software on the iPad? Expensive software for niche market. Yeah. My opinion is a resounding yes. Look at Coda. Coda is yeah. such a beautiful example. AstroPad uh, for the iPad Pro, which basically turns your iPad into a Cintiq. Procreate. That's really awesome. Yeah. It's gorgeous. The podcasting um, app Jason Snell was mentioning. Yeah, Ferrite, which I think Ferrite. is free with in-app purchases. Uh, Pinnacle Studio Pro, which used to be Avid for uh, for the mm -hmm. iPad, but Corel bought it and and tweaked it up a little bit. Pinnacle I've been using now a little bit. Uh, Federico Vitici recommended it to me, and I am in love. It's so good. Until, until they come out with Final Cut Pro, which I'm praying will happen soon because the iPad is a great device to edit films on. The so much 4K. The screen is beautiful. The fact that I can use multi-touch gestures is awesome. Uh, I just need more tools. I found a color correction app. Thanks, Federico, for basically giving me all of my tools for next year uh, that I'm really excited about. There, there's a lot. And then and then there's this, which, you know, this would be my top Apple tech pick of the year if it didn't require the iPad yes. to use it. But the Apple Pencil is everything I have ever wanted in a stylus. It's so good. It's so good. The fact that I was able to, I last week for fun over my lunch break, I was like, I'm going to draw Star Wars avatars. First five people who send me 15 bucks, I'll draw you an avatar. Um, and not only did a lot of people reply, which shocked me because I was like, really? <laughs> Just really? And, but I was able to do each of those, each of those portraits in like 20 minutes with the iPad Pro. And I tried I tried doing this a couple years back where I, I was selling avatars um, for a charity thing for our local roller derby league. And it would take me hours. Like I just yeah. remember doing one, I, I sold an avatar for $15 and I ended up doing 20 or 30 passes on it in paper for uh, for somebody. And, and by the end of it, I was just, I wanted to cry and I was like, F this, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> I just, I spent like $400 worth of my time on this $15 avatar. And this time around, I'm like, 20 minutes, see -hee, if you don't like it, too bad. And I'm everybody... doing pencil crayon caricatures for everyone for the holidays. That's, yeah. that's my version of the Christmas cards. Exactly. I Oh, I drew, you want to see the incomparable Christmas card? I drew yes. the incomparable Christmas card Absolutely. on the iPad Pro. Um, I have the actual one. But it's so funny because when I got the iPad Pro, I walked out... Um, uh, they they had like a little uh, I, f I forget what they were the briefing for it and I walked out uh, I had actually bought one earlier because they showed up in stores before I thought they would they showed up in stores on yeah, Wednesday yeah they showed up on Wednesday and I, I picked like, it up oh, from the oh. Apple store and on the way out of the Apple store there's like a Best Buy and I could hear all the Intel chipsets just wanting to dive off the tables <laughs> they're kind of crying and they're they, I, I know they have Wacom products in there too and I just heard sobbing it, and it's funny like and I don't mean that in a mean way it's just that sometimes. And I felt the same way about the bands. I've had uh, link bracelets for years on watches, and they've just always been link bracelets. But Apple enters, and they have fresh eyes, and they make something that you can adjust without without tools. And they did the same thing with the iPad Pro and the and the pencil. It's it's a new approach. It's not a digitizer. There's no air gap. There's no parallax. There's no little circle thing that follows you everywhere unless you remember to turn it off. It's, it's just it's new eyes doing it. And I love when a company like Apple comes in there, and this will filter down. Everyone will start doing. They'll take the best things Apple does. The best things they do and the whole industry will benefit oh yeah no question i i am really really impressed by what apple has been able to accomplish here and i'm really excited to see what it does for for wacom and for for everything else here i can um let's see if i can share my screen and i can show you this ridiculous thing that i made and I know you've been working primarily with your iPad Pro. I've been traveling with it and taking it to coffee shops. And I there are some things I miss. Like I still miss drag and drop. And there's some workflows I'm just so used to doing with multi-window that I feel like I do them better on the Mac. I don't know if that's emotional or intellectual, though. But I, there's almost no, there's almost nothing I can't do if I spend the time to figure it out now. Oh, exactly. You know, there are, there are a couple things initially where I'm just cranky about it. Where I'm like, this is awful, and this is so hard to do, and why did I agree to do this? Well, some is just transition. Like you have, like I have Final Cut Pro projects set up for the podcast, for example. Yeah. So it takes no time at all to edit them, and I can do it in iMovie. It's not a problem. But I have to look, basically do it from scratch every time, and that's just a little. It, it costs you up front in terms of time and effort, but afterwards, it's the same as doing it anywhere else. Well, exactly. And you know, what? I've gotten so good at workflow as a result that uh, workflow has become my new thing. Where I'm just like, oh, this is really easy, and. There was uh, the other day where I was like, I was trying to open Markdown, a Markdown file um, from 
from a zip file. And zip files are still a little weird for uh, for iOS to handle. So I had to bring it into Transmit, um, Panic's Transmit app, and unzip the file. Then from there, I'm like, well, I can't directly, there's no open in button. So I spent three minutes in workflow making a thing that would allow me to open in when I press the share button. It was just like, that was so easy and so simple and just like, bam. So here, I'm going to show you this crazy thing that I made. This is the, this is the incomparable holiday Aww. card. Um, and then I did this in procreate. And so that was an, and I was able to do like, this is a, this is a printable illustration. I, we had this printed on five by seven little, little holiday cards. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I took some screenshots of things that I wanted to incorporate into the drawing and they were all, um, Basically, I tried to get every single show on the Incomparable Network into this illustration in some way. So they're all like little cameos and various things. Uh, so I pulled in photos of each of them. Uh, like you can see on the screen for those who are watching right now, I pulled in the Incomparable Radio Theater logo. And then I just uh, freeform drew uh, the you know more specific area of the microphone based on based on how the uh, the logo looked. And yeah, I mean, this is a print ready illustration that I was able to do in Procreate. And I was really, really proud of myself that I was actually able to do this because I have never attempted to do a print ready illustration on an iPad before. Never, never, never. Because I just wrote it off. I was like, yeah, it's fine for doing like little doodles, but to, to actually do something that I would print or sell or send to people. I need a Wacom tablet for that. There's no way. Yeah, we talked about it last time. Like I, I was just not comfortable starting things. I would always start them with pencil and scan them in. And I've not done that at all ever since getting the iPad Pro. Yeah, which is, it's crazy to me. I feel so comfortable drawing on the iPad Pro. It just and feels no, like a pencil. It actually feels like a pencil. Yeah, it feels legitimate. And you know what? It, it allows you to put down your hand and draw in a yeah. way that I've never felt comfortable for any other stylist. There have been styluses that are like, yes, we are quote unquote, uh, we are quote unquote palm rejection compatible, but it's never been good. It's never been really good. It's always been kind of like, eh, not so much. I'm not really impressed by this or it just doesn't work for me. You know, there's there's been a lot of stuff. Now, does, does the incomparable, does Jason actually have a socks podcast or is that, because uh, to me, that's the killer <laughs> element in this composition. Oh, yeah. So the socks are actually from Lazy Doctor Who, um, <laughs> which has, you'll see in a, you'll see in a second as the coloring gets going. At a certain point, I was like, oh, right, I forgot to actually include holiday things in here. So I should probably draw a Christmas tree. Um, you'll you'll see when I go to color the socks, they're actually the uh, the style of, I believe, the fourth doctor's uh, scarf. Awesome. So they're all in the, let's see if I can skip ahead a little bit here. Uh, there you go. So they're all uh, they're all like purple and, and pale. And I love the layering because you can actually work almost like you work with cells where you can put paint on and then remove it uh, and it doesn't affect the line work, it doesn't erase or obliterate the line work. Yeah, I love the fact that there are layers. Uh, the one thing that I haven't been able to find in Procreate, I know it probably exists. Uh, you can see me experimenting with various colors here. But the one thing I haven't been able to find is the, um, the fill tool. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know where it exists. I know it probably exists because it's fill, and like it's it's so unlikely that paint bucket wouldn't exist in such a in such a world. But uh, but it's one thing where I haven't. I I have spent longer coloring than I probably need to because I just can't find the fill button, uh, and that's just laziness on my part because I'm like, well, eh, it's too much. Whatever. But that's legitimately yeah. awesome. Yeah. So that's that was the holiday card that I did for for the incomparable. Uh, happy holiday, nerds. Yay, happy holidays, nerds. It was really fun to do, and it came out pretty well. But it was also, at the event, it was amazing because you had Adobe and Microsoft on Apple's stage. And Adobe, arguably, especially for Microsoft, these products are better than the ones they make for the computer. Yeah. Oh, they, they absolutely... Adobe is frustrating to me because they've chopped their suite into tiny little pieces on the iPad. And I understand in theory what they did because honestly, Photoshop is a big bloated program and I'm kind of all for making it into component parts, but they've made it so simplified that it's really hard for the people to do what they want to do. Like there's Adobe Sketch, which in theory would be perfect for my initial drawings where I'm like, yes, this is great because I can do all of my line work here and then I can throw it to the computer and do more advanced graphic stuff, but it doesn't really offer many layers or yeah. brushes or color options. And that's really frustrating. There's always been this vibe that the indies are doing it better than the big companies in many ways. 
Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not quite like procreate is good, but it's not as good as Photoshop. I don't, and I'm not really sure if part of that is just learned, learned comfort. You know, I've been working with Photoshop since Photoshop 3.0. So it's I'm been, the same, but even like Pixelmator yeah. and Acorn are fantastic. And it's still like, I know how to do it in Photoshop. I have to look at it, do it in anything else. Yeah, exactly. And I've been trying, this year was a real experiment for me. Uh, I tried not to open Photoshop at all and solely work in Pixelmator this year. And for my photos, I mostly succeeded. I actually like Pixelmator's repair tool a lot better than I like Photoshop's. Yeah. And that's one of the big sort of, uh, the big pros for it for me. But overall, there are still some clunky things, um, especially Procreate. One of the things that frustrates me in Procreate's iOS app right now is that layer opacity is hidden under a, a layer, like a menu on the left-hand side. When it's like layer opacity, I should be able to just swipe on the layer yep. and tap opacity and it would work. Uh, and I think that's how it worked in a previous version of Procreate. So the new version just completely threw me where I'm just like, where's my, I just, oh, guys. And I told I, um, <laughs> Pixelmator, they put up a things like with rejected features. And one of them was gradient mapping because that belongs in MS Paint. And I think it made Mark Edwards' head explode. <laughs> yep. All right, we're going to take one more break. And I am going to tell you about, well, I've already started telling you about them, but I'm going to tell you about them again. This is lynda.com. lynda.com, I've said it before. For. It is basically the closest thing you can come to getting on the matrix and injecting helicopter and kung fu knowledge straight into your brain. So because it's the holidays, because it's going to be the new year, I want you to kickstart your new year and challenge yourself to learn something new with a free 10-day trial from lynda.com. Lynda.com is used by millions of people around the world and has over 3,000 courses on topics like web development, photography, visual design, and business, as well as software training for Word, WordPress, Photoshop, all the big software, a lot of medium-sized software too. All the courses are taught by experts and new courses are added on the site every week. Whether you want to set new financial goals, find work-life balance, invest in a new hobby, ask your boss for a raise, find a new job, or improve on your current job skills in 2016, Lynda.com has something for everyone. You can do what we do. Like if someone here wants to take a Lynda.com course, we will pay for it. We will get them a Lynda membership because it benefits it benefits us as a, as a site, as a company. So sign up for your free 10-day trial today by visiting Lynda.com slash iMore, and you'll get unlimited access to every course on, on lynda.com, access to view tutorials on tablets, on the iPhone, on Android. New courses are added every week. Getting things done is there. Business writing fundamentals, small business secrets, breaking out of a rut, foundations of photography, exposure and competition. Do something good for yourself in 2016 and sign up for a free 10-day lynda.com trial. Go to lynda.com slash iMore. Go ahead, challenge yourself, learn something new. Thank you so much, Linda. They are just legit awesome. Agreed. Uh, so yeah, like you said, the battery case came, the Apple Watch came, also coming late in the year with the new uh, DCI P3 IMAX. It wasn't enough. SRGB was not enough I for Apple. About, oh my God, I forgot about those and I'm staring at one right Likewise. now. Likewise. Uh, the 4K Retina IMAX. Oh, you're so pretty. I uh, This was a much needed upgrade to my workflow. And I feel bad. I actually have a, a my old 21 inch iMac is just sitting on the floor because I haven't figured out what to do with it yet. So it's just sitting next to my desk looking sad. No, I'll admit I can't see the difference in color. I know Gus Mueller and Mark Edwards have been talking about when you and even Don Melton talking about the difference in gradients and oh, I the, can tell. I mean but, working with images, I can tell. The retina I can absolutely tell. The the color space, because there's just so little that supports it right now. Uh, but I like that Apple is there. I like that with the display technology they're pushing it because uh, if you're not as familiar with P3, that's what you see in digital movie theaters. And just the idea that eventually I'll be able to have the Force Awakens on a P3 screen. Serenity, just ah. yeah, it's already available for pre-order. I'm so I, excited. I pre-ordered it the minute. I feel like why would you pre-order something digital? It's not like they're going to run out. But for me, I don't have to remember it now. It's bought. Yeah, exactly. It'll just show up. It's bought it, and did. One day it shows up, and I'm like, oh, squee oh plus play. Everyone else will be like, oh, now it wants my iTunes password. Oh, I have to re-verify. I'll be watching it already. Ha ha. The, um, this uh, actually tricked me because I actually pre-ordered um the Sherlock the next series of Sherlock and it showed up on my Apple TV today or yes, last night. And I was I like, oh, Sherlock's out. And no, it was just showing the pre-order for new Apple TV. Doctor stars. Who Christmas special too. I mean, Doctor Who Christmas, like they, they, the, my biggest gripe, my biggest gripe with iTunes in general and the Apple TV specific is they they give you pre-orders without telling you when it's shipping. Like it doesn't make it doesn't show you that it's a pre-order. So the Doctor Who Christmas special there, and I know it only comes out on Christmas Day, but I see it, I buy it. It doesn't say arrives Christmas Day, and then you get like one oh five trailer one oh six, uh, one minute discussion with Stephen Moffat about what Christmas means to elves. And like I just want the show. 
Yeah, agreed. Uh, yeah. No, so <laughs> I just opened Apple Music and the new page is all Taylor Swift. The all of the banners are Taylor Swift. All of the featured playlists are Taylor Swift. <laughs> Oh, another big thing. I, I can just tell Siri to play me The Force Awakens when I'm in my yeah. car. And it just oh, does. Oh, the new, the new soundtrack. It's just, it's good. There's yeah. So much. I understand why some people thought it wasn't as memorable as some of the other ones because there's no Imperial March. There's no Star Wars theme. There's no... The uh, original, uh, but when you listen to it, it is like, especially like like Ray's theme and the Invasion theme in the beginning. There's awesome stuff in it. Oh, yeah. There's still some some really great stuff. And I think they, they did really like john williams is is a so on course. point yes and even like ray's theme doesn't quite sound like the original themes it has a little bit more harry potter a little bit more jurassic park in it than i think your traditional star wars but i love that it stands out yeah there's a lot less there's a lot fewer horns in um in this soundtrack that was my first sort of noticing is that that and that the the themes start a lot bigger. Uh, if you listen to Leia's theme and even listen to Binary Sunset or any of the others, they start very small and very compact. Whereas I feel like Ray's theme kind of jumps out the gate with uh, with a full orchestra, just being like do 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 do. Yeah. I uh, but it's no. but it's still a great great listen. I hope that that John Williams uh, channel sticks the John Williams radio station for Star Wars sticks around forever because it's awesome. Yes. I'm just going to keep on playing it and hope that it stays in my most recent section. And we're going to keep reviewing, Star, sneakily reviewing Star Wars as we keep talking about Apple stuff. Yeah, sorry guys. Uh, uh, for those of you who don't like Star Wars, well, it's, uh, you, I, I'm sorry that you follow a website with two Star Wars geeks as your <laughs> as your host for today. <laughs> oh well. So looking back, um, for for so long, uh, for you know, Apple did have the in 2012 they did have spring events. 2000 actually since 2010 to 2012 they had iPads events in the spring. Then they just stopped and people kept saying, oh, Apple's not doing anything. They're not innovating. We're waiting until WWC. Apple's quiet. And now they this year they brought, they didn't only bring back the March event, but they doubled up on the September event. WWC, it was so much. It was, it was like, so be much. careful what you wish for Apple, people. Uh, Apple, you can take the spring off. It's okay. I mean, or, or like work secretly in the spring. <laughs> I, I know there's a rumor about a March event, but I actually, I wouldn't mind if you waited uh, until summer. They're not summer. gonna. They're not gonna. I got like 10 million books to make. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Ab Apple is rolling. Apple is rolling, and it's only going to more get more intense from here on out. So all of you who are like, Apple's not innovating, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm, 2015 was the year of innovation. 2016, I'm hoping, is the year of polishing. We've got all of this new stuff, and it's cool, and it's great. But let's not forget that uh, all of the cool stuff needs to work really well. Yeah, so this is one of the biggest challenges for Apple because it's, again, one of those things where people only want bigger horses. So you'll have, everyone will say, Apple, slow down, stop, don't do anything. Well, do the two or three things I want, but don't do anything else. And every two or three things is the stuff that other people, is, the stuff, is different than what other people want. And then when they do slow down, they're like, oh, Apple's dead, Apple's dying, they're doomed, they're not innovating. When they when they speed up, it's like, oh, Apple's not poly. Like, it, it, it really is damned if you don't, damned if you don't. So I would just say, draw a line, say, this is what we're going to do. And they just don't care about the noise. Mm -hmm. we're, we need to ship these things these are integral to our product going forward and we need to shore up these things and whatever that balance is just say like this is the best thing for us and this is what we're gonna do yeah yeah i'm i'm praying and hoping uh so much and to put a sort of a cap on the year just before the show went live we put the i'm more awards live Best yeah, of 2015. Best of 2015 um we have our our best apps our best accessories our best hardware um, best success. I said best accessories. Best. But this again, so much stuff. Two new app stores we had to include. This we didn't have. I mean, a bad yeah. problem to have, right? Great problem to have. Yeah, I know. Oh no, we have to pick more cool things. Apple Watch, Apple TV were new this year, and we made a choice. We did it differently because previous years we did one by category, but it, it just it was impossible. Now there just be oh, too yeah. many things. It just doesn't work. Yep. So the this year, um, and we have this big beautiful list. I think uh, Renee, I'm going to collect a list of my favorite. I'm going to borrow a card from Tichi's book and list some of the, the best apps I discovered and used this year. I awesome. think that would be fun. Um, talk about how my workspace has changed in 2015. We're going to have some reflections, but also some, uh, some looks to the year ahead. Uh, Renee, what do you, what's your hope for 2016? I think I, I think we're going to do that for our next week's show. I might save that. Yeah. Oh, shoot. We have okay. one more show this Never year. Never mind. Yeah. Hi. I never said anything. <laughs> well, I, I'm about to start talking. Um, we also have our Hall of Fame coming up, which, which will either be out Thursday or Friday, depending on. That's that's a much yep. smaller thing, so it doesn't take as long, but we like to do it right. Yep. All stars. 
Yeah. Great all the greats, the big greats. So lots, um, lots still well, to come. So much to come. Um, and in the meantime, I I think I, I should leave you with a droid. BB eight. The baby droid. Hold on. Let's We'll get it. We'll get him to actually talk. <laughs> Cause now now he has uh now he has actual noises. Uh-oh. There we go. <laughs> He's moving. Our accessory of the year. Yep. Yeah. He's very cute. And I love that it came sort of from uh, from iPhone ecosystem tech. It came from Sphero. Yeah, and well, Sphero did such a great job. He's so he's so cute. Like the fact that I can hold him in my hand and that he just makes noises and tries to roll around and save the uh, not not the rebellion anymore, <laughs> but the resistance. Oh my God, he's so cute. The the second, the one thing that the BB-8 Sphero app does not have that I'm very sad about is purring. Uh, because the, the first time that BB-8 purred, where he just looks at Ray and he goes, <laughs> and he just rocks, uh, was adorable. All right, so Serenity, if people want to want to continue following you over the holidays, you and the adventures of BB-8, where can they go? They can go to Saturn, S-E-T-T-E-R-N, right, BB-8? Um, and they can go to Saturn on Instagram as well, as well as on imore.com. And BB-8 and I are going to have a really fun holiday, uh, in California. And, uh, and we'll see, we'll see you more next week in the new year, 2016. Uh, I can't believe it's already almost 2016. You can find me at Renee Ritchie. You can find all of us at iMore. You can find the show at youtube.com slash iMore video. Or for just the audio version, you can go to iTunes. If you haven't already, please leave a review. Please leave a rating. It encourages iTunes to feature us. And that means we can find more awesome people like you. Thank you, everybody. Have amazing holidays. A Merry Christmas. Uh, we'll be back with a year-end show at some point in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and just have a great holidays. Yes, bye, Ren. Bye, bye, BB-8. Goodbye. Oh, I was going to have him wave. Hold on. Can I do this? Let's see. Awesome.